All right, welcome everyone to Thursday night's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. And boy, did you pick a great evening to watch us tonight. Let me tell you what, with the storm's rolling in. You don't want to be outside. You sure don't want to be out there uh, at a ball game with all this lightning going on that's fixing to hit us. So sit down and relax. You're the smart one. You're watching, going to watch a great, great, I like to say it's a humorous show. <laughs> Because <laughs> I have got my really good, good friend, one that I can trust with. I, I Well, we're just brothers. And that's, let's broaden out, and that's Terry Peoples. Terry Peoples, thank you, Terry, for being on the show again. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Right? Anytime, yeah. <laughs> You've been doing a lot of fishing lately. Yeah, I have. I've been uh, fishing Gunnersville a lot uh, and some down in Big Sandy. Crappie are really starting to come on yeah. good. Uh yeah. I haven't made it down to Lake Did we get that water. fish sandwich yet? No. I don't think I got that fish no. sandwich we're, yet. We're still stocking up here. We're still stocking up. <laughs> well, let's tell them what we're going to do now. And, and first off, let me apologize. Oh, we, boy. We, we had, uh, no, I, it's not bad. I yeah. promise it's not bad. <laughs> let me apologize, first of all. We experienced some camera difficulties, and so we had like we had like two hours, didn't we, of, of rabbit running uh, that we did. It was in March. Right. And we had a blast, and we were down in uh, Tanner, Alabama. Tanner, Alabama. Yeah, Tanner, Alabama, and met up with some fine folks down there at a little local diner, and uh, ate breakfast. Cannon. Yeah, and, yeah, and and just had a great time. But we're gonna apologize now because uh, when we got back to edit it, uh, the camera had messed up on a lot of it. But we happened to somehow miraculously save <laughs> some of the funniest parts, and they just. <laughs> I don't know how that happens, though. <laughs> yeah, especially when they were all on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was all on you, Terry. Okay. But we're gonna we're gonna take us uh, take all of you rabbit hunting along with us to, uh, in Alabama. Uh, we went down the river. Well, yeah, we we're down on the Elk River swamp rabbit hunting. Swamp rabbit hunting, and tell them a little bit about what you told me a while ago. I I was unaware. Now uh, a swamp rabbit can live to be how old? Ten years old. And, but the average is four to six months. Boy, that's that's uh, only like you know. Uh, well, when you got everything in the woods running after you, <laughs> <laughs> plus the parasites, oh, and yeah. uh, you know, with the hawks and the owls, you know, which he's top of the food chain. So yeah, yeah, you know, even in diners. So. Yeah, yeah, even with you and I, <laughs> yeah, that's right. good. So, you know, that makes it a little tough on him. Well, we didn't feel like we needed to show this right before Easter, so so we didn't show this. But now that Easter's passed and, and all the Easter egg hunting and all that's done with now, uh, we thought we could safely show this feature. That's right. And we're going we're gonna to show this feature here in just a minute. But uh, tell us a little bit, though, Terry, who were we hunting with? We were hunting with Richard McKinney mm -hmm. that day out of uh, Ardmore, Alabama. Right. Well, we were in Tanner. Yeah, we had, we were hunting in Tanner. In Tanner, Alabama, right. Uh, right on the Elk River. And y'all had found us. It was uh, a wildlife management area yeah, down there. that's right. Uh, we had gone into that wildlife management area. We had a boat ride. We had a little bit of boat ride. Yeah, that's there. the only access way that you can get to it because the land is, is landlocked. Yeah, it's landlocked by right. any roads. But we that's got right. down there and... What I'm glad we didn't show was uh, you getting stuck in the mud. Was, yeah, I got stuck in the mud. My boots came off, and <laughs> I wish we had that photo that you took, though. I got it. You did. Well, we. I wish we could show that one. That was funny. He he kept chunking rabbits at me, and it wasn't real funny for me. But <laughs> but we did have a good time down there. Um, it was. Uh, what's the bag limit down there? We eight. Eight. That's right. And so uh, we didn't do that. But I will say this. We didn't walk 100 yards. No. We and, didn't but each rabbit that we ran was probably about 45 minutes. Yeah. And none of them did we jump and start were more than, what, 200 yards from where we? Right, from the next one. From the boat. I mean, from the boat in a circumference. We struck every rabbit within 200 yards. Well, it started to warm up a little bit, too, so yeah. they started to tend to pair up a little bit. So a lot of times when that happens, you know, once you – a lot of times if you jump one, then you'll jump two if the dogs don't split. Mm -hmm. When they jump the rabbits, a lot of times they're they're already together. So 
Now, the part, the the most fun of of rabbit hunting, I believe, is the dogs. Is the dogs. That's, That's right. They're, they're the lifeblood of right. rabbit. And hunting. if you're really into your dogs, you're well in tune with them then actually the dogs are actually talking to you. And then, therefore, a lot of guys said that's that's nothing but music. It is. It is. It is. It I is. Mean, it, it's, it's wonderful to listen. It's great to watch them. Now, we took how many of yours? We took four or We five. took three of mine, and we took uh, eight of his. Eight of his. That's right. That's right. It was 11 dogs. That's right. Now, it's hard enough, isn't it, Terry, just to keep 11 dogs together? Well, when they... It's just like a football team. Once they've uh, hunted together long enough, then they know each other. And by you, the dog owner yourself, you know you know each dog's call. So oh yeah. So once they get packed up and get together, when one pops, the other one listens and they'll go to them and they'll stay grouped oh, up. We'll see. It, it, oh, it'll it was be. like it's like a you could hear them sniffing. Oh, yeah. 150 yards, you yeah. hear them snorting. And when it gets good to them, yeah. man, they'll sound like a little Kirby vacuum cleaner going through there. Terry, when should somebody, if, if somebody's interested after they see this and they want to get into rabbit hunting a, a little bit, what do you think, first off, what's the best breed? I, I know what you like. Uh, you like the Beagles. You mean for as, uh, as the dog. size, do size yeah. of dog? Yeah. I like a 13-inch, a mid-sized a mid, mid -sized dog. Because they can take on a fence pretty good, and they can get under brush piles. A big, a bigger dog. Not saying that he won't, but he just tends to not. Just a lot of times, it's too big to get underneath those those uh, honeysuckles and those real thick brush piles or those bulldozers piles that they pile up. Mm -hmm. uh, which, like my Luke dog, he's a bigger dog, and he's a more experienced dog. He can kind of go around the edges and. He can almost smell a, a wind where the rabbit went in at. Yeah. And then a lot of times he'll hit a couple of times right there and one of the smaller dogs will come in and go right in where he sniffed at and then he'll just keep circling and waiting. And once that other dog goes in and pushes him out, it's on. It's on, man. That's right. Now, now you say 13, there's there's an 11 inch. Yeah, there's right? 10 inch. And there's a 10 inch. Yeah, right. there's, there's 10, 10, 10, 13, 14. Up to 15, but after they get over 15, they're not still considered a big. They're, well, they're more going into the fox. You know, okay. they're 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 yeah. they're getting too big. Right. Then, it's, if you're field trialing, but, but now, there's certain situations where you want certain type dogs, isn't there? Well, some people like the longer leg bigger when it comes to swamp rabbit hunting for as the speed, and then once they get they're taking on a lot of water. But at the same time, as you saw when we were hunting in Tanner. Uh, Richard has a lot of 13-inch dogs, and they didn't have a problem with no. the water, but he's got enough dogs where they can cover enough ground, you know. Yeah. You know so yeah. it, it helps a lot, especially when they're, when they're, as you will see, that they're running in a lot of water. And a swamp rabbit, he does a lot of things. He can jump up onto a log. He can run down 20 or 30 yards and then backtrack or even jump over into the water and swim out and just stay right there in the middle of the water. Yeah. But if you got 10 dogs flanking that bank, then his odds of sitting there for very long is not going to be real good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, i tell you what. Let's take a break right now, uh, visit some of our fine sponsors. When we come back, we got a little bit of pictures of the week, and then we want to take you to Tanner, Alabama for a nice little uh, rabbit hunt. So hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Water. This segment is being brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company, where setting the hook is an everyday thing. All right, welcome back, everyone. This week's Pitch of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Garden Center. Hey, Mike and Deborah out there have got lots and lots of uh, greenery. Uh, a lot of veggies coming on too for it's that time of year man it's that time to start planting tomatoes and squash and cucumbers and all that kind of stuff going out there to flowers garden center eaton's creek road mike and deborah have got the plant that you need to be planted all right our first picture here hey i can't get any better than this this is a turkey hunt from april 6th this is andrew and stephen wigger they got their turkeys on a farm in Bellevue, Tennessee. And let me tell you something, those boys are rut. 
They are ready to go hunting anytime you are ready. Our next picture here, this is Dayton. Look here with some big hybrids he's been catching uh, out on Percy Priest. And that, my late, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is just the beginning. They're just now starting to make those big runs. So get out there at Percy Priest, have yourself a fun time. That's that's Dayton right there, and the next one's Chad. And uh, Chad's got, Chad's holding another one of the big hybrids right there. So uh, Dayton and Chad's been wearing them out. So go out there and have some fun out there on Percy Priest. Hey, this is our good friend. <laughs> this is Ryan. Ryan, remember, Ryan makes Ryan's custom lures. 17, he may be 18 now, uh, but he's in Manchester, Tennessee. Goes to school, but he makes plastic baits on the side. And, and he does this, uh, he's got several, several stores. But he said, Hugh, I just had to show one of my big pigs that I caught down on Gunnersville on his new jig. So congratulations there, Ryan. That's a nice, nice fish. This is from uh, Breeding Powers. He said, this is my largemouth bass that was caught in Penny Ryle Lake in my in Kentucky and it is about eight pounds look at the belly on. looks like me without my shirt on <laughs> hey I tell you what you can't get any better than that brother you can send your pictures to us here at Southern Woods and Waters 474 James Ryerson Parkway Nashville Tennessee 37219 or simply email them to me at hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com we'll get them on here a lot really really quick a lot of turkey pictures coming in uh, just keep them coming. A lot of nice crappie, too. People don't hold crappie anymore. You notice that? They just show coolers full of crappie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, they're whatever. Waiting, they're waiting to catch that two or three, at three pounds. That's then right. Show them. That's right. Hey, I, we're going to go take you hunting now. Uh, it's a, Like I said, it's a very short piece. But I want you to make, make and pay special attention oh, boy. to my, my dead eye over here. <laughs> what he does with his first shot of the day. I was getting warmed up. Yeah, right. Well, we may get hate mail for this. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's go right now to Tanner, Alabama for some swamp rabbit hunting. The tree got in the way on that one, too. I want everybody to see this tree. Oh <laughs> look, look at the tree. The guy. <laughs> Hey, 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 come here, Lamar. Here, Blue. Here, I. Come here, girl. 
Yeah. Hey, come here, girl. Get Terry. Yes, sir. Talk to me for a second. Yes, sir. Now, Terry, we had been here ten minutes, and they run them like they was tied to them. <laughs> they did. They were about <laughs> they were about twenty yards behind him. That's a big old swamp rabbit. Yep. That's a doe right there. Yep. That's a doe. She Big ran, old swamp she rabbit. She ran a good track right there. Yes, sir. That was hitting every breath. If it hadn't been for that tree right there, I got him on the first I'm leg. telling you, that tree now. He just kind of eased over in front of me, though. You know, the tree people aren't going to like you <laughs> killing these trees, I guess. <laughs> we'll edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're off to another race. I told you it was short, <laughs> but it was sweet. <laughs> I tell you, we, it, it, and I apologize. You can see we had some technical difficulties even in that shorter piece, but we just had to get some of it out there. And Terry, uh, it was fun, but I just hope none of the tree people really, you know. I'll give you his address. <laughs> <laughs> But then, you know, I, I'm glad it only happens to Terry. Because <laughs> the the, they talk, you know, they talk about now, Terry. You really are a great shot, and, and usually, it, it's one shot, and you got one rabbit in the bag. Yeah. Uh, but you've been doing it since you were knee high to a grasshopper. Uh, yeah, I've been doing it for that, a long time. There's something about that rabbit hunting in there. Yeah, it is. It's addictive, but it's it's mainly the dogs. You got to have love for the dogs. If you got love for the dogs, then that's what keeps you going. But, uh, you know, my parents and some of my friends and even myself, we consume the, the, the rabbit oh, yeah. that we get. And uh, once everybody's got their fill, then we won't even kill them. You know, we'll just yeah. go for the running of it. So Now, your mama makes a mean fried rabbit. Yeah, my dad. This, my, oh, my mom makes my dad clean them. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but, so it's the same at your parents' house as it is at mine, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah but, uh, yeah, the, uh, but now I want to talk to you. I want to get into, uh, because a lot of people see how fun it is. I mean, it is a fun. And it's always been, for the most part, a southern tradition around Thanksgiving and all that to go rabbit hunt. You know, get all the family together. They come together for Thanksgiving, and everybody gets to go rabbit hunting. But it's kind of dying off a little bit. We're seeing less and less rabbit hunters. What What do you contribute that to? I, mean, I would say one of the main reasons is uh, loss of habitat. And, yeah. uh, you know, and it's just... It's getting to where that it's it's harder and harder to find hunting places, and that you have to travel so far to get into the rabbits. And the the places that are close, usually, they're you know the they're they're on somebody's already has those spots. And if yeah. you're not in with them, you know then you don't get to you hunt. don't get to hunt it. Yeah, that's right. So. For the most part, is finding a good area to hunt and being able to hold on to it. And as as a lot of the older generation dies off, the younger group will tend to move the property because they really don't or have the love for it as the older ones do. No. So, and, but I have to say, you and I in the past two three years. We're willing to go to Kentucky, and we've been to Illinois, and we've been to Kentucky, we've been to Tennessee and Alabama. Alabama. Uh, yeah, I've so been to Arkansas. We're not, we're not afraid to move around. No, uh, especially for a good rabbit hunt. And but now, tell everybody you've had you've had some really exceptional rabbit hunts this year. Um, Y'all had a what was your best day? Y'all had a real good day this year. The best hunt this year, I'm going to say, was probably in Athens. Yeah. And it was on a hillbilly hunt. And, uh, of course, the hillbilly hunts, the, the runs are not quite as long. Every now and then you'll get a buck rabbit that'll run mm -hmm. for the most part. But uh, this particular day, the weather was right. Um, every rabbit that they jumped, you know, they, they ran the whole track. Uh, not only did they run the, it was very little shutdown time, and I think we killed 
let's say there was one, two, three, four of us. And I think we had 12. We had 12 or 14 rabbits that day. But it was just solid the whole yeah. time. I mean, every race. And the dogs just couldn't seem to get enough. But, you know, they there was no way that rabbit could shake them no matter what he did. Terry, if, if so, you know, because not everybody rabbit hunts, but the one thing I found hunting with you and being with you and, and filming you is when, when the dog strikes, and when the dog strikes a, a scent trail and it's after one, and usually they catch up to them pretty fast and they can see them, you listen to the tone of the dog's voice and you can tell when they strike, and then you know when everybody's hot. We don't go far. We don't try to cut them off and, and try to outrun the dogs. You just say, hey, let's just find a good spot. Wait just a minute. What happens? What happens is the dog will, will jump the rabbit. And when he jumps that rabbit, of course, that rabbit takes off and he's going to do his deal. And almost, almost, I'm going to say 85%. I won't go okay. as much as say 90 to 100, but almost 85% of the time that rabbit's going to run a big circle and he's going to come back within maybe 20 or 30 yards of that spot that he got up at. And if, if you if, if you can see where he got up at or if you can get pretty much close to where that you heard him move, if you watch, he'll come back to that spot right there or he'll come within range of that spot. So, but what I do is, is I listen to the dogs. And once they're going away, you can tell when they turn and start coming back towards you. And if you'll get in front of the voice, it's almost like the voice is hitting you. Then he's coming right to you. But he'll still be 30 or 40 yards out in front of him. Oh, Sometimes yeah. further, than, further that, than that if they're putting a lot of pressure on him. That's right. You know, That's right. I have been in front of a – have killed a, a rabbit, and it's been 20 or 30 minutes before the dogs get to you. Goodness. That's how far ahead of him that he was. Well, I'll tell you what. we got to take uh, a, and do our product of the week, and then we're going to talk to Terry some more. So let's do our product of the week. Southern Woods and Waters product of the week brought to you by FowlQuest. Guys, it got me in. Start. All right. I, I want to talk to you tonight about we had Do All Outdoors on here last week. Jonathan Hayes is the national sales uh, manager and marketing uh, guy. And Jonathan showed me these products, and I just went crazy over them and thought you needed to look at them at least. And that is during this turkey season, a lot of guys and gals are taking the juveniles out. This Not only juveniles, but even us old guys like us get tired of holding those big heavy shotguns up in a, <laughs> in a position. We got a great product right here. They do all has got what they call a monopod, which has a V in it, or you can change it out to hold a shotgun. But it's a V. It, it does uh, extend out to wherever you need it to be uh, for your shooting, uh, for the proper shooting height. They have the monopod. Here is the bipod. This actually will fit on your shotgun. You just hold it down there and then arrange it to where uh, whatever height you need it. And then my favorite is the tripod. I can hold my shotgun in there, hold it right there, lay it down on the ground. And it'll be just about right for when that big old bird does come around, okay? Check them out, doalloutdoors.com, and tell Jonathan Hayes that, we, that you heard about it from Southern Woods and Waters. We'll be right back with more right after this nice break. 